They were banging on the front door hard. If there was someone inside, then they would have heard. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody there? Hello, miss? Can you hear me? The officers screamed. One of the female officers walked to the side of the porch and peeped through a window. Dougie, look. I think I can see somebody inside. It looks like a person, she said urgently. Would they be able to open the door? Jenny Morrison was a strong and determined mother from Okemos, Michigan. She had a six-year-old daughter named Claire. Claire was a quiet child, often appearing withdrawn and carrying an air of sadness that her teacher, Mrs. Singh, couldn't help but notice. Mrs. Singh suspected that Claire might have been going through some trauma at home, but she never interfered or asked Jenny about it, respecting the delicate boundaries of her student's personal life until one day. Mrs. Singh, a compassionate and observant teacher, had always felt a deep concern for her quiet student, Claire. The little girl seemed distant and traumatized, often arriving at school with a melancholy expression on her face. Mrs. Singh suspected that something was amiss in Claire's home life, but she respected boundaries and never interfered. However, one fateful day, she noticed something that sent shivers down her spine. One day, as Mrs. Singh glanced at Jenny, she noticed a black eye peeking out from beneath her sunglasses. Concerned for her well-being, Mrs. Singh approached Jenny during pickup time and asked if everything was all right. Jenny, with a forced smile, quickly lied and explained that it had been a silly accident. But the careful teacher wasn't easily fooled. She was genuinely concerned. As Jenny Morrison dropped Claire off at school, Mrs. Singh couldn't help but notice the dark, bruised circle around Jenny's eye. She had to find out what was going on with her pupil's parents. Concerned, she approached Jenny and gently asked, Is everything all right, Jenny? That looks like quite a nasty bruise. Did something happen? Jenny hesitated for a moment, her eyes darting around nervously. Finally, she responded with a lie. Oh, it's nothing, Mrs. Singh. I just accidentally walked into a door. Mrs. Singh's heart sank at the obvious fabrication, but she decided to trust Jenny's words for the time being. Throughout the day, however, her thoughts lingered on that black eye, and her unease grew steadily. Days passed, and Claire failed to show up at school. Every morning, Mrs. Singh anxiously awaited her arrival, hoping for the best, but fearing the worst. Finally, on a gloomy Monday morning, Claire's father dropped her off at the school gates. Relief washed over Mrs. Singh as she collected the pale and frail girl, who appeared weaker than usual. Mrs. Singh thought it strange that Jenny wasn't there that morning. She had only ever seen Mr. Morrison once before, on the first day of school. Mr. Morrison saw Mrs. Singh rushing over to the truck and quickly jumped in so as not to make eye contact or conversation. Mrs. Singh looked dead straight into Mr. Morrison's eyes as he drove away. As Mrs. Singh helped Claire settle into her seat, she noticed something peculiar sticking out from the little girl's sock. Being curious, she bent down and gingerly pulled at it. To her astonishment, she found a crumpled piece of paper tightly pushed into Claire's tiny sock. It seemed as though Jenny had got Claire ready for school with a special purpose in mind. Mrs. Singh approached Claire gently her eyes filled with both concern and curiosity. She helped the child settle into her desk, trying to gauge how she was feeling that day. As Mrs. Singh knelt down to adjust Claire's sock, she noticed something sticking out of it, a crumpled piece of paper. Instinctively, she pulled at it, unfolding the note with trembling hands. The teacher was nervous. She didn't know what to expect. Claire was already such a sensitive child but she had to check for herself. Unfolding the note, Mrs. Singh's eyes widened with shock. The message scrawled in Jenny's hurried handwriting sent chills down her spine. Was it real? How could she understand what was going on? Claire was little and wouldn't be able to explain anything. Mrs. Singh's heart sank, realizing that her suspicions were indeed founded. She fought back tears, overwhelmed by the weight of the situation and the responsibility that now lay upon her. 
Her eyes widened as she read the desperate plea written in Jenny's handwriting. Call the police! Don't send Claire home! Shock and concern flooded Mrs. Singh's heart as she realized the gravity of the situation. She discreetly tucked the note away, not wanting to cause alarm in front of Claire. Did your mommy put this there? She asked Claire. The girl nodded. Yes. With a heavy heart, she decided to take action immediately, determined to protect both Jenny and Claire from further harm. She could stop something worse from happening. A surge of urgency propelled Mrs. Singh into action. She immediately showed the note to the school principal, who shared her alarm. We need to get the authorities involved, Principal Baggins said. With the principal watching over Claire, Mrs. Singh dialed the emergency number, her voice trembling as she reported the distressing situation to the police. Principal Baggins was enraged as he waited. He was a short, strict man. He loved teaching and had a passion for educating children. Not in my school, the nerve of him. Some people shouldn't be parents, he huffed. Within minutes, law enforcement arrived at the school. Their concern mirrored in their eyes as they read the note. Would they be able to help in time? The authorities raced to the Morrison's address a few blocks away. It was an old area, and the house was dilapidated and falling apart. Mrs. Singh accompanied them to Claire's home, where they found the doors locked and no response from within. Desperation filled the air as they shouted Claire's name, pleading for a sign of life. They were starting to get more concerned. There was no response from the inside. They tried the back door, but it was locked. Are there any other windows open up there? One officer asked. Were they too late? A haunting silence greeted their calls until a faint noise reverberated from within, a sound resembling something heavy hitting the floor. Everybody turned to face the direction the noise came from. What was that? The main officer said, edging toward the front door. I heard it too, Mrs. Singh said, trying to look inside, but it was dark. The police knew they couldn't waste any more time. They forcefully broke down the door, revealing a scene that would forever be etched in their memories. Mrs. Singh screamed in shock. It was a bloody sight. Jenny lay on the floor, battered and bloodied, her pain evident in every bruise and cut. The room bore signs of a violent struggle, a testament to the suffering she had endured. The officer rushed to her side, shining the flashlight on her face. She's breathing. We need to get her out of here fast, she said, trying to get Jenny conscious. Jenny, can you hear me? Mrs. Singh said, trying to offer some comfort to the battered woman. Claire is fine. She is safe, okay? She tried to give the distraught woman some hope. The police quickly called for an ambulance, ensuring Jenny's safety and immediate medical attention. While paramedics tended to Jenny's injuries, the police sprang into action, determined to bring the abuser to justice. Meanwhile, back at the school, Claire remained blissfully unaware of the tumultuous events unfolding around her. The principal sat her down in a warm and comforting space, gently explaining that her mother had been hurt, but that help was on the way. Claire's wide eyes filled with worry and confusion, her innocence shattered by the painful truth of her family's situation. But this wasn't the end for the young girl and her mother. For young Claire, this information was a hard pill to swallow. Girls her age weren't usually in such positions, and from the looks of it, she didn't even know what the note had to say. She was quivering, her eyes were glistening with tears, and the principal could only imagine what she must have been going through at that point in time. But the worst was yet to come. Everyone knew that Claire was too young to understand what was happening, but she could see what was going on behind closed doors. And before long, she'd understand why her daddy wasn't coming home. That didn't mean things would become easier, though. After all, this was over. The damage would have already been done. It would take years for her to fully recover from the situation. During the entire explanation, Claire didn't say a word. She just looked at the principal with big, sparkling eyes and trembling lips. But when he stopped speaking, she had one question, and the principal didn't know how to answer it. Will my mommy be okay? she asked as her tears finally began spilling over. The principal turned pale. The principal knew what was coming next. 
and he wasn't prepared for it. It took the gathering of all his nerves to tell her that her mom had been taken to the hospital. But how could he possibly tell her that her dad had been arrested and that he'd probably stay in jail for the next few years? It would crush her. The principal knew that the young girl before him was facing so many challenges at that point in time. And for someone her age, those obstacles looked like gigantic mountains. He also knew that nothing he said would make the situation any better, but he still tried his best to assure her that everything would be fine in the long run. Was he right? As the hospital authorities worked tirelessly to restore Jenny to a stable state, Mrs. Singh stayed by their side, offering support and reassurance. She became a guiding light for both mother and daughter, a beacon of hope in their darkest hours. She barely knew them, but she prayed that the poor woman wouldn't succumb to any more harm. Mrs. Singh stayed by Jenny's side the entire time, and she swore to remain there until the woman was well enough to sustain herself. The only time she left was when she called the principal to find out how Claire was doing and to update them on Jenny's condition, which was still incredibly unstable. Would the young mom make it out of this? Hours had passed by and Jenny showed absolutely no signs of improvement. And then things took a turn for the worst. Jenny was crashing. As the sight before her crushed the young teacher, she clasped her hands together and did something she hadn't done in a long time. She started to pray, begging for the young mom to make it out of the situation she was in. In a matter of seconds, the room was filled with medical staff. Doctors were barking orders while nurses ran to do what they were told. But for Mrs. Singh, everything was happening in slow motion. The events were starting to take their toll on her, and she couldn't handle it. This was the first time in her life that she had seen something so tragic. As she stood aside and watched the doctors do their jobs, her mind turned to what happened that tragic day. Everything that had happened started playing through her mind. From the moment she saw the note to her journey to the hospital, it was all flashing before her eyes and tearing down all of her defenses. Tears started rolling down Mrs. Singh's cheeks as she watched the events unfold once more. She just couldn't believe what she had gone through that day, what Claire had gone through. But it was the moment that the officers arrived that stuck with her through it all. It was a bittersweet moment that cost her young student her family. The police arrived at the hospital residence promptly, Finding her battered and bruised, they wanted an official statement from Mrs. Singh and Jenny. She's in no state to speak. She hasn't even woken up yet, please. Mrs. Singh tried to protect Jenny. The police took Mrs. Singh's statement and tried to collect more evidence about Mr. Morrison. They intended on catching him out. Mrs. Singh gave the officers all the information she knew, but it wasn't as helpful as she thought it would be. In order for them to put an end to this madness once and for all, they would need to find Jenny's husband, and they needed someone who could tell them where he was. Would they be successful? Mrs. Singh told the officers that she could try the school's admin desk. They generally had all the information that was needed when it came to their parents. The school needed work numbers for both parents in case something happened to one of the children. And if they were lucky, they'd have an address as well. The officers wouldn't have to wait that long, though. As soon as Mrs. Singh left the room, Jenny opened her eyes. As Mrs. Singh saw that the woman had gained consciousness, her heart skipped a beat. Would Jenny be willing to speak up against her husband? Or would she avoid it at all costs? They'd find out soon enough. The officers asked Jenny to make a statement about what had happened that day, and she was all too happy to oblige. She told them everything they needed to know and more. But there was one piece of information that meant more than all the rest combined. Did the officers finally have what they were looking for? The officer's voice was laced with pain when he asked, Do you know where we can find your husband? Jenny swallowed the lump that had formed in her throat. Was she ready to give the man up? Or would she keep suffering at his hands? Tears flowed down her cheeks as she opened her mouth to speak. The moment of truth had finally arrived. The detective managed to get the information about Mr. Morrison's workplace he was a cashier for a fishing shop near the lake. It was a bit of a drive out. Armed with the address of Jenny's husband's workplace, they swiftly apprehended him, ensuring that he would never pose a threat to Jenny or Claire again. When the authorities arrived at the fishing shop, 
their sirens were blaring. Mr. Morrison knew that they were there for him, and he tried to run away. Don't let that man get away, the officer screamed across the grounds. He slipped and fell down the fire escape, and the officer was able to catch him. They arrested Jenny's husband, ensuring that he would face the consequences of his actions. Mr. Morrison was incarcerated for domestic violence and abuse. In the days that followed, Jenny began the long journey of physical and emotional healing, surrounded by a community that rallied to her aid. Social services provided temporary shelter and support, ensuring the safety of Claire, while Jenny regained her strength and rebuilt her life. Meanwhile, Mrs. Johnson was in contact with local support services to provide Jenny with the necessary resources and support to rebuild her life. Through therapy and counseling, Claire slowly found her voice, her quiet demeanor transforming into a resilient spirit. Her experience had taught her empathy and the importance of speaking up against abuse. With the guidance of Mrs. Singh and other caring individuals, she blossomed into a beacon of resilience, determined to break the cycle of violence. The story of Jenny, Claire, and Mrs. Singh became a catalyst for change within the community. Awareness campaigns were launched, empowering others to speak out against domestic abuse and offer support to those trepid in its vicious grip. The once silenced voices gained strength as more people began to take a stand against the hidden horrors that plagued families behind closed doors. Jenny's journey toward healing and empowerment inspired many others, shedding light on the often unseen battles fought by survivors of domestic violence. Although Jenny was embarrassed at first, she got over her own emotions and was proud of who she was. She had overcome the worst pain and was fighting every day for her little girl. And within the walls of that small school, Mrs. Singh's act of bravery and compassion rippled through the lives of countless children. Her unwavering dedication to her students transformed not only Claire's life, but also the trajectory of her entire family. The pain and trauma that once overshadowed their existence gradually gave way to a future filled with love, support, and the promise of a brighter tomorrow. If tales of heartwarming compassion are what you like hearing about, then subscribe to our channel for many more great stories.